Dr. Suggs is one of those people that you feel like you've known for your entire life. Dr. Suggs really has been the chief champion of diversity and inclusion, making sure that everybody has a seat at the table, but also that St. Louis is a great region for us all to have a seat at the table. And he sees the challenges that St. Louis has been faced with over the years, but he also looks at the opportunities. Where the more you, uh, you're around him, and the more you ask him questions, uh, the more you realize the, the, the legacy of uh, Donald Suggs. So he's a publisher, he's a writer, he's a doctor, he's a civic leader, he's an art patron. I think he believes if we're all better as individuals, we'll be better as a community. He was a, a lion of the civil rights movement. Oh, in 1968, he led the Poor People's March in Washington, D.C. And while at the same time, he had a thriving dental practice as an oral surgeon, and he, of course, was the first uh, African-American to serve on the faculty of St. Louis University's dental school. And he also was a, um, an owner of, a, of an African-American art gallery in New York. And then, of course, he became the owner and publisher of the St. Louis American newspaper, which is a nationally prominent uh, black newspaper, a weekly newspaper, uh, that uh, he really sort of resurrected from being a, a fairly good newspaper to an excellent, to a great newspaper under his watch. And so he was sort of our, uh, our renaissance man who sort of did it all. In the early days, we were a family of very limited means, but we always had newspapers. This is before television. And there was also a time uh, of segregation when black newspapers were very important in their communities. My history in St. Louis is I came here after dental school for a program at a hospital, Homer G. Phillips Hospital, which was a hospital that was built in 1937 uh, to service black patients. Um, it was also a training ground for black physicians. I left St. Louis uh, to go to the military to serve two years, but I was here as a child, and then the civil rights movement comes about, and all of a sudden, this is the moment. He does this in a way that is really true from his heart. He's committed to the community. He wants to see us be the best version of ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, well, the largest influence in my life, of course, were, was my family. My father, I went to the third grade. You know, he worked in the steel mill, kind of an entry-level job. That was such a pity, such a gifted person who never had a chance to cultivate his gift. My mother, who was a woman of great rectitude, very religious, devout, and but both of them were very devoted to uh, bringing their children up. But what was also very disturbing for me as a young person, of course, growing up in an age of segregation, was why, why are we living in these circumstances? Dr. Suggs has been a great inspiration to me. As a matter of fact, he's probably the only other person other than my father that I've considered somewhat of a mentor in, in the St. Louis area. Everything he does is for the community and he uplifts people in the community. Um, certainly I've benefited from that, but that's not anything new. Uh, there's a number of people who he's supported who also contribute to the, to the St. Louis community. He is someone who is very thoughtful about, about approaches. He's a really good example for others to follow and it has been for, for me to, to sort of hone my leadership. I think that you have an obligation to your teammates uh, as a leader. Uh, you have an obligation to set the course for the organization. And if a part of what you want to achieve in your career means also paying back the kind of society we live in, uh, make me feel an obligation to try to be of some value uh, to someone beside myself and my family. And I think as a black person, that even heightens it a lot because you've seen more, so much missed opportunity for people based on their circumstances. And he's also driven, I think, by a sense of, uh, an abiding sense of, uh, of social and economic and racial justice. Uh, he goes about the process of, of methodically uh, and, and astutely sort of dismantling every manifestation of, of systemic racism that he's aware of. At the heart of it, Don is an entrepreneur. On one hand, many people see him as that civic entrepreneur, that voice. 
on what is just and right. But if you really look at his life and his career, think about being a publisher of a newspaper. Every day and every way, you've got to figure out how to fund that newspaper. And so I think Don fundamentally understands how hard that is. And he also understands you've got to reinvent yourself. He's also not afraid to share a spotlight. And so I think he is less focused on who gets the credit around um, an idea or strategy. He's more uh, focused on you know, making certain the strategy moves forward and the strategy is fully realized. I made the decision that I was gonna grow my company in a way where I was very aware and contributed um, both civically and otherwise. And it was all because of the example that I, I saw in uh, Suggs. This late age of my life, what excites me is the possibilities. I don't think about personal legacy per se. Um, my legacy lies, I guess, at this point with my children um, and my granddaughter. You just want the people that are closest to you, that know you best, feel that you've made a good effort, that maybe you had some value some people other than yourself. I don't know of many people who are as much a part of the, the fabric of the St. Louis community than, than, than Donald Sucks. Not only has he done the St. Louis American and what he has done for art that is at the art museum that will live on after him, but then you're also looking at all of the different universities and colleges throughout this entire region and the state of Missouri, and even some in Illinois, where there are Donald M. Suggs scholarships. They will live on past him and their impact will be all over this world. Certainly I'm very optimistic about St. Louis's potential. There's no doubt that um, this could be, this place could, could undergo a renaissance.